curve at S1. Next, we'll test sensation. Um, we're going to use the same techniques that we used in the upper extremity. Uh, Mary, I'd like to start off by just testing light touch. Okay. If you close your eyes and tell me if you feel the touch being the same or different on the two sides. Okay. We're going to start at the upper thigh. Do you feel this here? Same. Same on both sides. Good. And then medial knee. Same. That's L3. Medial ankle. Same. Good. On the foot here. Same. Good. That's L5. And then over on the lateral heel area. Same. And that's S1. Next, we'll do the same thing using a fresh, new cotton tip applicator that is uh, broken with just slight sharpness here. And Mary, I'm asking you if this is the same um, on both sides as well. And okay. again, at L2, at the upper, inner, upper outer thigh. Same. Good. L3, the medial knee. Same. Good. L4, at the medial ankle. Good. L5 on the dorsum of the foot. Same. Good. And S1 on the lateral part of the heel. Same. Good. Again, if you found an area of um, decreased sensation, you could alternate sharp and dull using the Q-tip um, for the soft and or dull and the um, broken end of the stick for the sharp to more closely examine an area. Mary, is this sharp or dull? And this? Dull. Good. And this? Sharp. Good. And this? Dull. Good. Vibration sense, again, is tested over a bony prominence. And I'd recommend that we use um, the first MTP joint. And so we just give our tuning fork a little vibration and then place it over the bone. Mary, do you feel a vibration here? Yes. Good. Now I'm going to stop the vibration. Say, Mary, do you feel a vibration now? No. Temperature sense can also be tested if there's an abnormality. And then joint position sense is the next one to test. And Mary, I'm going to just move your toe. I'd like you to close your eyes and then tell me if I'm moving it upward or downwards. Okay. Up. Okay, back to neutral. Down. Good. Back to neutral. Up. Good. Very good. Next, we're going to test rapid alternating movements or coordination tests in the lower extremity. In order to do this, Mary, I'd like to ask you uh, to move your heel up and down your shin. So if you would take your right heel and start at the bottom of the foot and bring it all the way up to your knee and back down and up and down. Excellent. And one more time. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side using your heel up against the shin. As we do this test, we're looking for difficulty in coordinating this maneuver, and this would be a very normal finding um, with rapid alternating movements in the lower extremity. The deep tendon reflexes will be checked next. Using our reflex hammer, we'll check the um, knee or patella reflex. Uh, the patella is um, L2, L3, or L4. It varies in different people. In order to check this, I sometimes will ask them to relax their leg and even help them relax it by holding it down and then striking the hammer just below the kneecap in the area of the patellar tendon, which is not on the bone of the kneecap, but just below it. And then the same thing on this side. Sometimes by having your hand uh, down here, you prevent someone with very active reflexes from kicking their leg up very high which can sometimes be uncomfortable or sometimes even strike the examiner. Next, we'll check um, the reflexes uh, uh, on the Achilles tendon, which is back behind the heel here. In order to do this, I'm going to just gently hold your foot up like this. And you can just let it relax, Mary, as if I'm not even helping. And I'm just going to strike the back of your leg. And then you can see as I strike the tendon here um, that the foot pulls down. And by having my hand gently supporting your ankle here, can not only see the reflex, but I can actually feel it. Reflexes are gauged um, on uh, the uh, four-point scale, as we described in the upper extremity. Next, we're going to do 
um, the uh, uh, Babinski test, and this involves testing the bottom of your foot. And this is going to be a little bit ticklish or a little uncomfortable, possibly. And it's always good to warn patients before doing this um, because it indeed can be a little uncomfortable. So I'm going to take the back side of the reflex hammer and very, very gently rub up along the side of the, the uh, bottom of the foot. And what we're testing with this as we rub up along the foot in this arc is to see if the toe goes down and the toes fan. And so I'm just going to do it again, Mary. And the same thing on this side. And you can see her toes curl down um, and the toe come down, which is normal. And opening of the toes or upward movement of the toe would be an abnormal or positive Babinski sign. And so that's normal. And finally, we're going to test for clonus. Clonus is tested in the ankle and is a sign of hyperreflexivity. Um, I'm going to just uh, support your leg like this. And Mary, I w I'd like to ask you just to kind of let your leg just relax and be like dead weight down here. And then I put one hand uh, over the ball of the foot and then briskly lift up um, and flex, dorsiflexing the, the ankle. And as I do this, I'm feeling for beats or oscillations that occur naturally when uh, the, the ankle is dorsiflexed forcefully like that. In a normal person, you'll feel one or two beats, they're called, of clonus. You can see at least one of them, I think, in the camera there, um, that there's a, a, a slight jerk there as I lift it up. If you have multiple beats, more than two, that would be considered um, abnormal um, and positive for the clonus test. And finally, we're going to test for our gait and Romberg. Uh, the gait and Romberg test involves Mary coming down off the table and actually walking. So Mary, I'm going to ask that you come down and step over here if you would. And then I'd just like you to walk just along the table to the wall. And as she walks, I'm watching for her arms to swing. I'm watching for... Um, uh, a wide stepped or broad stepped uh, gait. Why don't you walk back over on your toes, on your tippy toes, if you would? And then we look for strength uh, and balance here as she walks on her uh, tippy toes. And why don't you walk back on your heels, actually, if you would? And then we can do both toe and heel walk. Good. Now, finally, I'm going to have you do uh, what's called tandem gait, which involves a heel to toe walk. Okay. And so if you'd walk heel to toe towards the wall, this is another coordination test of course. And then if you want to just turn around and come on back with just a couple of more steps like that. Very good. And so that tests for uh, coordination with tandem gait. And then finally, we're going to do the Romberg. Now the Romberg is a balance test. So Mary, I'd like you just to stand with your feet together, if you would, arms at your side, nice and relaxed. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Okay. And then as you close your eyes and balance, I'm going to just put my arms here so that I can catch Mary if she starts to fall. A little swaying is normal with this test. And Mary is just rock solid. Um, so Mary, you can open your eyes. Thanks. One more test to perform in a standing position is pronator drift. This will test coordination, strength, as well as look for cortical spinal tract lesions. Mary, I'd like to, you to stand with your hands outstretched, palms towards the ceiling, and then I'd like you to just close your eyes. And what we watch for is pronation or a, some movement like this of the hand, which would be an abnormal finding. And again, a little bit of wavering is normal. Mary, you can open your eyes. Thank you. And that completes the upper and lower extremity examination.